Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking at what are their thoughts and feelings about you and the connection. There are three groups to choose from. Group one is the rose quartz. Group two is the lapis lazuli. And group three is the selenite. So if you want to take a moment to center, focus on your breathing and feel whichever group, maybe multiple groups or perhaps all of the groups that you're most drawn to, I'll give you a minute to make your selection and then we'll get right into it. And there are timestamps in the description box of the video for each group if you'd like to jump ahead, which I do recommend using so that you can skip over me shuffling cards in between groups to clear the energy of the group I've just read for and tap into the energy of the group I'm about to read for. So again, I'll give you a minute, please use the timestamps and we'll get into your reading. Hi, group one. You chose the rose quartz. So I'm going to start with some tarot and oracle cards to see how are they thinking and feeling about you and the connection right now. So we have the Hermit, which is Virgo energy. Five of Swords, which is air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Nine of Wands, which is fire energy, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Six of Cups, which is water energy, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. A Grand Symphony. and the royal you. So I'm hearing the words an impossible task 
And I feel that this really ties in with the energy of reconciliation um, and nostalgia that is embodied in the Six of Cups. They're thinking back on times spent with you, um, really focusing on a sense of loss, a sense of defeat um, with the Five of Swords that maybe wasn't so clear to them before, but in the aftermath of the two of you going into some kind of a period of separation or silence, their choice to move away from you, um, that it has really occurred to them what they have lost now that it is gone. And it feels to be a very impossible task to correct this situation. The idea of a grand symphony can talk about an unfinished symphony between the two of you, words that they wish to speak, um, a desire to move back into harmony with you, to move out of this energy of dissonance. Um, they could really be focusing on and almost held back from communication because of an energy of um, mistrust that they are sensing coming from you or based on maybe things that were said, things that were said very impulsively in kind of the heat of the moment and the heat of anger, um, that the logical conclusion is that you would be a bit wary about welcoming this person back into your world. Um, and so again, there's this sense of loss and defeat, not really sure how to to um, kind of move beyond the situation, not really sure how to sort of pick themselves up and navigate around those words which were spoken that could not be taken back, the time that has passed as well, and that really being a factor. Again, that element of an impossible task. Um, you know, maybe you have closed down your social media, you've changed your phone number, you've moved. Um, they're kind of at a loss for, for how to contact you. There's also this energy of sort of the tactic or the approach that they had taken to you previously. There is an understanding of evolution that needs to take place that what worked before uh, will no longer work um, as well or at all in this circumstance. It's going to require a new strategy on this person's part. Um, the idea of the hermit can talk about a lot of introspection that has happened, um, a lot of reflection and a lot of wisdom that has been gained, again, in a period of separation of, of being away from you or, you know, just really having the, the opportunity in hindsight to reflect on the approach that they took to the situation, words that were said. Um, and it's the idea here with this, um, this lantern with the star in it on the hermit card that there's maybe just a glimmer of hope that they have at this point or hope is dwindling, that the situation can be improved upon. Um, in a lot of ways they are getting in their own way. This feels like a very necessary part of kind of the evolutionary process though for themselves and the potential of what could possibly manifest between the two of you in the future. They are needing to face this energy of defeat and loss within themselves. They're needing to recognize how they got in their own way. Some maturation is required. Again, a different strategy or a different approach. Um, with this idea here of the royal you, they are definitely putting you up on some kind of a pedestal, recognizing your worth and value to them and just as a person in ways that they hadn't really been able to comprehend previously. They may have recognized some kind of a glow up that has occurred with you, some way in which you really have turned your situation around. Maybe you've stepped into your purpose, um, you've stepped into your power, you, you've taken your power back from this situation and they see you. If they are able to watch you, maybe on social media, media or from afar or if um, communication, if the lines of communication have almost been completely shut down or altered in some way, then this person is definitely energetically feeling you. They're sensing you with this idea with the hermit and, the, and his eyes closed and yet there's all this illumination kind of in the dark around him, that the energetic bond between you and this person is still very strong um, and they are sensing that shift in your energy which is kind of compounding that idea of an impossible task. Um, that it will require evolution on their part in order to kind of um, work past this sense of guardedness and these barriers, not only within themselves, but which may logically at this point and necessarily exist at this point in this connection with one another, that they're feeling you're not going to be so so easily swayed, so ready to kind of get back into a connection with them, um, that it will require apology in the form of changed behavior rather than just words. It's a task that they may not feel equipped for, a recognition as well on the 
on the Nine of Wands card, um, and there's this this serpent, this cobra that is coiled around this this wand here, um, and it's this idea of this transformation, a shedding of an old skin, um, a discontinuing of an old approach to the situation, to you, to themselves, to life and love in general that is required. Um, but it's very it's very small at this point in time. The hope that they have of change is very small. They've kind of just got these first inklings of idea about what needs to be done, a path that needs to be um, sort of embarked upon in order to achieve that. Um, this also, this idea of the kundalini energy comes through with this with this cobra that's kind of coiled around this wand, um, and it ties in as well to that energetic bond between the both of you. Um, they're still very much deeply attracted to you, very compelled in your direction feeling very acutely um, and in these very subtle ways that may be outside of kind of their conscious recognition but which is energetically sensed and felt the glow up that you are going through the ways in which you are you know kind of trying to transmute this pain into a source of power and motivation and inspiration to reach for better both within yourself and in your external circumstances all of that is being um, sensed and perceived by this person and it's this energy of kind of shift and change that they are picking up on um, from afar from you that has really kind of brought these thoughts back. Um, it's bringing up these memories. It's really triggering that. Um, it feels that it's a bit outside of their conscious awareness, kind of why they're being reminded of you, um, why they, you know, are kind of having these these second thoughts almost at this point in time. And as they are confronting that again, it's it's really making very acute this sense of defeat that they are feeling, the sense of loss that they are feeling, seeing your worth and value from fresh eyes in a new way that they weren't able to appreciate or comprehend before. Um, but nevertheless, kind of the work that you are doing is sort of rippling out to them. Um, and so it, it feels like somebody who, again, is kind of, um, they're almost defeating themselves. They're almost um, getting in their own way before taking any kind of action forward. They're viewing themselves as just having um, really not much to offer at this point in time. And so there's a bit of melancholy in this energy, um, a feeling of sorrow and loss, which again is a very necessary stage in this person's evolution and development. They need to sit in this. They need to very acutely feel, um, you know, kind of this very small compared to, you know, where they are now compared to where the two of you could have gone together with this very just tiny little lotus flower here. Um, there's a sense of, you know, the the connection, the, the feeling, the closeness that they once shared with you has kind of dwindled into this ember. Um, it's this small possibility, just this, this little inkling of hope that something might be able to change in the future, but there's so much growth that needs to happen. Um, you know, this awareness is just the first step on, on kind of a journey that needs to take place. So for a lot of you, this person is kind of, they're sitting right on that threshold. It's just, it's these very tiny beginnings. It's these little seeds that are starting to sprout um, that do have the makings of the possibility of change in the future. But right now it's almost just somebody who's sitting from afar and kind of looking, feeling into you, sifting back through kind of the memories and the recollections of what they had now that it's gone, um, viewing you with fresh eyes, feeling you energetically, or even if they are able to see things, um, recognizing the evolution that has taken place within you, which is bringing up these fears of inadequacy within them, um, a sense and a knowing that they still have a long road ahead of them um, before they can kind of join you on that elevated plane, on that elevated plateau. For a lot of you, they may not even think this is possible. Um, you see, you feel very far out of reach for this person. Again, that idea of the impossible task. Um, and so it's somebody who's just kind of sitting in their own defeat, sitting in the bed that they have made for themselves, um, needing to kind of um, saturate themselves and kind of marinate in that environment of sort of loss and defeat um, as this very necessary period of almost a crushing pressure, a sense of, um, you know, almost kind of self-pity, feeling sorry for themselves, um, being perhaps very harsh on themselves for this. Um, with the idea of the wounded warrior and the nine of wands, it feels like a battle that is being waged within them against themselves. A lot of regret here. Um, a lot of, you know, self-reflection in other ways about sort of what led the two of you to this place in time, um, coming to the recognition that they have no one to blame but themselves for this circumstance. Um, but this being that very necessary, almost it's it's them propelling themselves to some kind of a rock bottom state um, where then the only direction to go is up. 
Um, and it's again very very necessary period of time where they must just kind of sit from afar and watch. Um, they must just kind of sit with themselves and, and kind of look within and, and to recognize um, tendencies and patterns and habits within themselves that they are now being tasked through this kind of um, feeling of defeat and through the circumstances that they've created for themselves. They are now tasked with this um, kind of challenge to overcome these things, to come to that place of harmony within self, to step into that best version of self um, in order to not only have the potential to offer something of value to generate kind of these winds of reconciliation between the two of you in the future, um, but also kind of this need for growth and evolution that is becoming apparent to them in their life in general. So I'm going to get some messages from their higher self and see what do they want to tell you right now. Okay, and they say, I saw myself in you the first second I laid eyes on you. So there could have been a lot of um, this energy of sort of running from their own reflection. Again, that idea of the pedestal that they put you upon. Um, they are in this process and still, you know, not exactly at that point of the best that they see in you exists within them as well. In some way, you trigger a lot of this person's kind of wounds and shadows, um, a version of themselves that they have been invited to step into and may have been neglecting or kind of making the choice to move in the opposite direction for some time. They feel very compelled to you um, and at the same time very triggered which may have caused them to impulsively sort of sabotage this connection self-sabotage it wreck it um, kind of destroy and, and push away uh, the potential that existed between the two of you to create dissonance where there was none to disrupt the harmony between the two of you almost a feeling of, of not being worthy or being very inadequate for this um, for this potential of this very um, pure and kind of unadulterated love that that you exude that they recognize within you um, that really shines toward them and reflects something within themselves that they've just not been at a place yet of being able to see and recognize again they're still very much sitting in this energy of kind of self-pity and wallowing and they also say things aren't always as easy as they seem so this really ties into if this person is, you know, acting very nonchalant, posting a lot of things on social media, almost overcompensating um, in a way for how, how good their life is, how, how happy they are, how put together things are. Um, there's a sense of, again, just um, like a mask or an illusion or an overcompensation that this is really a disguise for a lot of this internal turmoil that's occurring for them. Um, it's almost the idea of trying to put on, put on a happy face for others, for the benefit of others, and inside they are crying. And they also say, you are healing my soul, but it is a work in progress. So this ties into that idea of the work that you do reverberates to them. Um, it motivates them to change. It at least opens up the possibility of a different vibration. It brings them to an awareness of um, what they have just kind of accepted within themselves and maybe ignored or bypassed within themselves. They are being confronted with this. They're being brought back around to this. Um, a lot of these truths and a lot of this reality of the situation they find themselves having pushed away wish fulfillment in a certain way um, through this connection. These are not always easy things to sit with, but it's a very necessary portion of this journey for this person, confronting these shadows, going deeply within, kind of pulling away from a version of self, pulling away from a certain reality that they had constructed and had kind of been um, going through the motions of in order to really step into the next phase or level of this evolutionary process within themselves. And they also say, I constantly feel you running through my veins. So this ties in with that kundalini energy that we saw with that tiny cobra on the wand, um, that as much as they may have tried to sort of push this connection away, numb it out, distract themselves with other things, they keep being brought back around to you um, very unconsciously. It may have been something and even still at times is very frustrating for them, why they can't get you out of their mind, why they keep you know, circling back around to this, why they're still so curious about you. They've drawn some kind of a line in the sand and they themselves are crossing that line. They keep tiptoeing back over or kind of looking back in your direction. Um, and it's something where they don't feel necessarily at the point where they are able to recognize kind of the nature um, or the dynamic 
dynamic of this deep soul bond between you, but this is almost like an itch that can't be scratched. They keep coming back around to it. They keep looking or being curious. Um, they keep being flooded with these memories and these nostalgia and this, these reminders of what has happened. And it's almost an irritant that is forcing them to retreat further and further within to introspect, um, to discontinue kind of looking for logical or exterior solutions, reasons and explanations for this energy, for this dynamic and these memories, and to search within for that truth, um, to dig beneath the surface and start to open themselves up to kind of the larger spiritual truths, um, the higher truths of what this connection is and kind of the nature and purpose of it. So I'm going to get you some guidance about the situation. Okay, and we have hold your wisdom close, guardian of the sacred vessel. So to me, this card is all about boundaries. Um, if this person does reach out to you at some point in time, um, you're definitely gar are advised to be you know, a little discerning with this person, you know, hearing what they have to say, but not being so quick to rush back into this situation. Um, it feels like something where for some of you, they may impulsively, just because of what they are sensing energetically, they may come to you before they are ready, before they have fully kind of gestated and germinated into their fullest potential. Again, the idea of that tiny lotus and the tiny cobra, um, it may just be kind of the glimmer of hope, the beginning of something, um, that seed of potential. And so for the benefit of the connection and the benefit of yourself and also to continue, it feels as you have been doing, sort of leading the way toward evolution, toward the, you know, the evolution internally of oneself and therefore the evolution of the connection. Um, it may be in your best interest and in the best interest of the connection to keep a little distance and a little bit of space. Use the wisdom that you have learned in your own kind of healing journey to you know, really allow the situation to develop organically. Be very discerning with this person when they, when and if they come back around and kind of um, feeling beneath the words that are said, looking for changed behavior to match up with kind of words of change, understanding that, you know, if they come in prematurely and that you may need to be the one then to draw that new line in the sand, um, you know, to kind of set that standard, to teach them what is expected, um, things you may have entertained at one point in time that you are no longer willing to accept in your life. This can really help them. It can be very educational for them um, in terms of kind of going back into that period of withdrawal to, to really look within and to really to be able to determine um, that new strategy, that new approach, what is required going forward, um, you know, honoring the work that you have done at this point in your journey for taking back your power, honoring yourself, valuing yourself, loving yourself. Um, and as tempting as that might be, if this person comes forward with communication, um, it can be very easy to kind of backslide in that sense. And the work that we've done kind of um, falls by the wayside or, you know, we kind of let our emotions or even sort of this residual hope that we've been holding on to kind of cloud our better judgment. And if that's the case, if you let them back in and, you know, things kind of fall apart again, you know, just kind of getting back into that process of, you know, taking back your power. You've got these skills, you've got these tools and these abilities now. Um, you know, this time around on that wheel, on that cycle, it will be easier to get back to that place of equilibrium within you. But again, a sense of discernment is definitely advised in this situation. If they reach out, if they make contact for you, not to just be um, so easy to kind of open that door to let them back in. Um, and it's not setting these impossible tasks for them. It's again, just a form of education. Um, what was kind of acceptable and, and you know, permissible before, that has all changed. Um, you have changed, the circumstances has, have changed. Um, you have seen and you have really captured and, and you recognize your own worth and value. This is the new standard of what is required. And either this person will, you know, adhere to that standard, rise to that occasion and meet you on that level um, with consistency and, and diligence and, and proof of effort, again, through, through actions, not just words that you wanna hear, but 
um, actual concrete demonstrations of change and consistency in that manner. And if it's something that they are not able and willing to do at this point, you know, then then holding very firmly to those boundaries, protecting your heart, um, you know, protecting your emotions, not just giving so much of yourself to this person and this connection as you may have in the past. And that can be very educational for them as well to, again, go back, go back to the drawing board, um, re-strategize, kind of take in and, and digest that interaction, that reaction or lack of reaction that you have had to them if it just if it doesn't feel quite right and you know maybe you're just keeping silence as that form of sort of that distance or that barrier it can cause them to kind of go back in and, and sort of sift through that and to really pick apart um, you know why they didn't get the reaction or the response that they had hoped for which can be very instrumental again in that process of um, kind of growth changing their approach, changing their method, um, looking for alternative ways or, you know, really solutions within themselves, turning that uh, mirror into self to see kind of what was lacking in that, what was sort of energetically off or vibrationally off or kind of off in their approach, um, which can really be that food for thought that is necessary for evolution of this person, for their own benefit, and also for the potential of what can develop between the two of you in the future. So I'm going to get some initials now, and this can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. I've got G, V, O, M, J, L, R, B, K, E, C, S, and W. So those are your messages, group one. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I now offer pre-recorded video readings, which are sent to you as a private YouTube link. Turnaround time on those is three to five days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.
Hi, group two. You chose the lapis lazuli. So I'm going to start with some tarot and oracle cards to see what are their thoughts and feelings about you and the connection. Okay, and we've got the Ace of Wands, which is Fire Energy, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. We've got the Knight of Swords, which is um, Air Energy, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. The Hierophant, which is Taurus. Nine of Swords, so more of that Air Energy. Time Machine and Beautiful Uncaging. So right away, two things are coming through. Um, I'm hearing that share song, If I Could Turn Back Time. So you may want to Google the lyrics to that song that may hold additional messages for you. Um, and specifically what's coming through is the line where she says, um, I'd take back those words that hurt you and you'd stay. And coupled with that is this also this very kind of um, panicked sort of energy of what have I done? Um, and that's sort of the overarching theme here as far as your person's thoughts and feelings right now um, about you and this connection. With Nine of Swords, that ties in with that energy of anxiety, that energy of panic, that, oh no, what have I done here? Um, what have I let slip through my fingers? Um, with the Knight of Swords, this is a lot of a lot of thoughts that are coming through. Also on this card here with these swords that are just kind of... Uh, plummeting out of the sky at this person and they're just very overwhelmed at this um, so a lot of uh, it feels like kind of revelations that are coming to this person with the idea of beautiful uncaging um, they may have undergone some kind of a heart chakra activation recently something has really shifted in the heart space with them um, they may have been sort of closed off to love in general a lot of wounds that they had been harboring from previous heartbreaks that operated as a third party energy in this connection from right from the start right from the start they were very closed off to this very resistant to this they would only allow you in so far um, at a certain point maybe the you know the level of intimacy the level of connection between the two of you became overwhelming became very triggering and they pushed you away or you know said some things or did some things that were very hurtful where you had no choice but to leave um, you know a very harsh rejection very very cutting and direct words that were spoken that didn't leave a lot of room for you know discussion or for negotiation in this um, something has really shifted within this person the idea with ace of wands can also talk about about kundalini awakening some kind of an ascension journey um, a lot of downloads that this person may have been getting as well cosmically through what is just kind of happening um, right now eclipse season specifically is coming up very strongly which we're, we're right in the middle of it um, this is a timeless reading but um, we are getting pretty close to the full moon in Taurus so there's more of that hierophant energy on November 8th um, which is going to be a lunar Lunar eclipse, um, the second in a three-part series of eclipses. Um, eclipses always come in threes. And so this is really tying in with this idea of um, almost a magnification of these feelings, these very pent-up emotions, a lot of truths that this person was unwilling to recognize about um, you know, kind of who you are to them, um, the nature of this connection as the medicine that they have required to heal this broken heart that they've been carrying around with them or these kind of um, wounds or distortions related to romance. Um, perhaps even during the, the first um, of the eclipses that happened, which would have been in the new moon on in 
excuse me, the new moon in Scorpio. Um, gosh, I'm going to get the date wrong on this. I want to say that that was on October 27th, 28th or 29th. And I'm, I'm not too sure it was it was one of those days. It was kind of right at um, the beginning of um, Scorpio season. But that may have been a very kind of profound pivot point for this person um, in terms of, you know, just kind of the energies, the things that were sort of swirling around that solar eclipse energy, that that very kind of that empowered center where it really Really unlocked something, something this person had been kind of avoiding. Um, and as we're getting closer then to this next kind of phase of the eclipses, um, that it's just, it's coming in really strong for this person. Um, a lot of visions that they may be having, a lot of memories that are coming back through, a lot of truths um, about the spiritual nature with the Hierophant of this connection that they had overlooked or had um, almost pushed away in the past. Um, and it's this feeling of kind of panic, a sinking feeling like the bottom dropping out, that again, this medicine, um, this cure almost, or this anecdote to a lot of the pain that they've been carrying around within their heart. Um, you know, ghosts of the past that have kind of been following them along, have operated as this third party energy, both in this connection and also in other connections that they may have tried to enter into subsequent to being with you, even prior to being with you, this person is in a place of getting a lot of clarity about these things um, where they almost have sort of stood in their own way. They've almost been pushing away sort of the energy that would help to heal that broken heart. There is this idea, again, um, of wanting to go back in time, a feeling that it may be too late to change things and a sense of panic, um, a very hurried energy with this, that the more clarity that is coming to them, the more their eyes and their heart are opened to the nature of this connection and to... Um, sort of the truth of, of what they did, what the cost of that was in the past. Um, there's a feeling of time running out, um, this energy of, of change, and it's almost, um, it's bringing to mind the idea of almost like a, a, a movie or a video that they're watching, but they have it on fast forward. It's just so much that is kind of, it's coming coming through for them. It's connecting the dots in a very major way. Um, they can't help but look at this, and it's filling them with that anxiety and that panic and that dread. Again, that sense of what have I done? What have I pushed away? What have I, what kind of corner have I backed myself into? Um, you know, why did I push this person away as something to be, you know, feared or as something that was very adversarial to me when this is in fact um, just the solution that I've been needing? It's just um, the remedy that I've been needing for kind of this heaviness and this heartbreak, which has been um, kind of slowing this person down through their life or just being kind of carried around like this excess baggage. They may have closed out some cycle with a person also with the idea of the of the time machine, some kind of a, you know, a healing, a spontaneous sort of healing or something that they've been working on releasing within themselves. And once they have done that, maybe breaking out of kind of a toxic pattern within their life, um, some kind of a toxic relationship that they were involved in, that they have finally extracted themselves from and it has freed their heart in a major way. Um, it's opened up almost this void or vacuum um, and nature abhors a vacuum. So what seems to be being filled in that space is this recognition, is this truth, it is this reality um, that a choice was made in the past. The path of fear was chosen as opposed to the path of love in this circumstance, which may also be a trend for this person in general. It's a very harsh reality um, to sit with, a lot of panic and a lot of anxiety, um, recognizing how you know, just very simple, but kind of regular choices that were made all in that same direction, that same kind of archetypal path of fear, how it's just led to this situation of them going round and round, the same lessons, the same experiences, you know, the same kind of themes um, in connections, in relationships, in circumstances, resurfacing in the form of different people in different scenarios, but it's the same um, kind of common core with all of that. And through that, they are now able to distinguish um, kind of that polarity. Um, that the situation with you, the feelings they have for you are liberation. Um, it's love which allows as opposed to what they have known or what they have been entertaining, which is love that contains. Love which, you know, expects its conditional love versus this very unconditional love. Um, and so it's, it's, it's an eye-opening experience for this person. It's very shocking for this person. Um, but there is a sense with this clarity is coming this motivation. They are becoming activated in some way 
as this panic is coming in, this, this sense of urgency that they need to do something in this situation to try and uh, make up for lost time, to try and correct what has been done. Um, you know, that the, again, the words spoken or whatever was done, that damage has been done, but it is this motivation to kind of heal and repair that, perhaps even come and ask for, you know, forgiveness from you with the Hierophant, um, seeking some sort of redemption or forgiveness from you, um, you know, providing you with that energy of vindication and redemption, this desire um, that is not necessarily at the point of action or knowing really how to do this. They are not at the point of strategizing. It's just this urge and the sense of, I have to make this right somehow. I have to make this right in this lifetime. Even if making it right is just, you know, speaking that truth, speaking that apology, even if it, you know, doesn't open the door to a new romance or the next chapter between the both of you. It's something where, you know, this person can no longer run or hide from that truth. Um, it's infusing them. It's becoming part of who they are. They are recognizing how they've been participating in illusion, in limitation, and almost have turned away in the form of this connection um, from this liberation energy, from this, um, you know, very pure form of love, which is very much a contrast to what they have known up to this point in time. So I'm going to get some messages from their higher self for you now, group two. Okay, and they say, all I ever wanted and needed is you. So they have come to this realization that they may have been chasing shadows before, just chasing um, things that looked really good on the outside, um, you know, things that really fed their ego, or even sort of chasing what was comfortable and predictable and known to them, even if that was disappointment, you know, chasing this kind of closed off energy, a lack of love. Um, this person's been cracked open in some way. It's a truth that they have run from that they are now very clear about. Out, um, that you you fill their life energetically and even in the experiences you've had together with um, a level and a velocity of love that they have been unaccustomed to that they've not been able to find anywhere else um, they may have entered into other connections um, or even just chosen to remain single and kind of closed off to love but something within this person has cracked open something within this person has um, been sort of cleared away or lifted a burden has been lifted from them and they are now able to recognize and are coming to terms with in a very sort of um, uncomfortable way but that that truth and that reality that that um, what they've experienced with you or the potential that exists with you is everything they've been looking for in a partner. And um, it feels the way that they always had imagined love should feel like, but that they had never known it to be before. And they also say, you are my secret passion. So that reference to passion, that is that ace of wands energy, that fire, that activation, um, that this person is still, again, sitting in kind of a panic mode right now, um, kind of going through the litany of, of things that were said or, or missed opportunities, things they should have done better or that, you know, they're starting to recognize really stem from that very closed off energy, that very wounded energy, that emotional baggage that they sort of brought with them into this connection. Um, and there's this secret desire of kind of making things right again that sense of I can't let the story end like this I have to make things right I have to kind of make up for this lost time but it's something that they're keeping very internal at this point not really talking with anyone about this not making this known um, it almost is the energy of somebody who's really frozen in place and can't help but just sort of look at these things look at these internal kind of images feel the feelings that they had really repressed or, or kind of denied or, or tried to stuff down or push away that are now just bubbling to the surface their heart is been almost cracked wide open and they can't help but feel all of these things that they had denied for so long and they also say I'm burning with passion for you so double confirmation there with that passion that ace of wands energy um, they're very attracted to you they really um, are starting to to recognize how they they pushed away kind of the best thing that had ever come into their life or the potential of what could have been built into the best thing that they could have ever known in love if this is something where you know you never really got off the ground the connection never really you know developed into much um, there is this desire and this curiosity kind of what if what would 
would have happened if I had taken a chance, if I had moved towards this person rather than kind of push them away or to run from this. Um, it's this it's this energy of activation, this infusion that is coming through um, with all of this panic and this realization and this truth um, is also this this fire that is that is building within them. What may have kind of um, just sort of dimmed down to an ember, an ember of connection an ember of recognition and feeling, um, those those flames are now being stoked. That fire is kind of building within them. It is this motivation. It's the idea of an engine um, that has been, it's it's been turned over and it kind of, you know, clunks to life. And it's, it's taking this period of time to kind of warm up, to get those juices flowing, to get that, you know, those components kind of working, that this person's in this process of kind of warming up to this um, as sort of a prelude to taking some kind of action towards you. And they also say, I'm terrified of you. So the intensity of what has been sparked within them by you and for you definitely hit on a nerve for them, um, got too close to the proximity of these wounds they'd been carrying around inside of them. And so no matter what they said or did, um, really the underlying motivation for kind of pushing this away or really denying you, denying you that cup of love, rejecting you, was this almost self-protective mode of not wanting those wounds to be exposed within them, becoming so accustomed to that hurt and disappointment and heaviness that they'd carried around within, that when almost the anecdote, the remedy to that. The antithesis of that presented itself to them in the form of this connection. Um, it was such a stark contrast to what had become so known and familiar to them that instinctually they almost pushed this away or, or ran from this connection, um, terrified of what that might feel like to actually let that burden go, wanting to the healing, but then very scared of kind of what that new reality would look like because they'd become so accustomed to that feeling of kind of heaviness and disappointment within. So I'm going to get some guidance for you now about the situation. Okay, and we have draw your story, star woman, stone woman. Um, so for those of you who are artistically inclined, this can be um, kind of some encouragement and guidance to use all of this kind of the pent up emotion, the good, the bad, and the ugly that you are feeling about this circumstance, what you're picking up energetically from this person. You most likely are sensing something, maybe a degree of anxiety or panic, um, kind of this, this, this warming sensation within you um, that is reflective of their heart being cracked open, emotions that they've been denying, being touched upon. All of this can really be fuel for your creative endeavors. Um, this is also really talking about the idea of, um, you know, kind of imagining that the story between you can have a different ending. Um, you know, the circumstances which have played out up to this point, the place of acceptance that you have reached about what has taken place, what is currently happening, and, you know, the choice you've made to move forward, perhaps in other directions, or just kind of learning to live with this, um, with this circumstance as it is now, any kind of release of expectations that has taken place or that you're being kind of nudged in the direction of doing. Um, there's an energy of fluidity with this that, you know, in the very kind of immediate and in the general sense, it is always a good idea to release expectations of timing, of the nature of how things will work out, how things will play out, um, opening ourselves up to the mystery and the magic of the universe and of spirit um, and of other people and their ability to have the free will choice to, you know, take corrective measures or to continue in patterns, um, to open ourselves up to the unknown and trusting that whatever kind of comes around or, or develops out of situations and in our life is really you know, even the difficult experiences are meant to be kind of teaching tools. They strengthen us. They help us to identify kind of those best parts of self. Um, you know, it's something where nothing is really set in stone. People can change. Um, it may be quite surprising the energy in which this person returns back to you. With all of this clarity and all of this kind of um, realization that is happening, this person feels very much propelled at a rapid pace on some kind of a um, some kind of a journey within themselves um, to at least recognize these shadows, um, to recognize kind of the wedge that they have brought with them into different scenarios. They've really gotten in their own way in a major sense, not only in this connection, but in other potential romances and other kind of circumstances, friendships, you know, even relationships with their family because of this heaviness, this burden, this closed off heart shocker energy that they've kind of been carrying around with them. They've been lugging this around with them um, through the years or through the decades, you know, whatever the, the specific circumstances are for your situation. 
Um, but this card is really, you know, guiding you to um, continue to move forward, but, you know, keep that door open a crack for this person. Um, as you are stepping into that unknown, you know, it's very appropriate to also keep in mind and, and to keep as a possibility or a variable of potential outcomes and circumstances for yourself is that this person will do the work that's necessary. As much as you've been doing the work to heal, they are just as capable of doing that work. Um, you know, everything that's played out up to this point, this doesn't need to be the end of the story. There is change that is occurring within this person. Most likely you are able to sense something or will start to sense something. You know, these energetic ripples that seem to not um, have an origin point within you necessarily or in your circumstances that can then be interpreted as kind of you're just picking up on sort of the the fumes of this of what is being kind of you know the residue of what this person is going through what's emanating from them um, and that can definitely be a very telling gauge of again change you know the two polarities of stagnancy or change um, if you are sensing something you know, it's, it's undetermined, again, not written in stone as to what that outcome will be. Um, but change is always, it's a beautiful new potential. It opens up a new series of possibilities from the stagnancy, um, taking the lead to, you know, institute that energy of change within your own life any places in which you've become stagnant taking the lead to generate change to you know close out outdated patterns to dig deep heal any kind of residual things even in regards to this circumstance that you've been carrying around that has been keeping your heart a bit closed off um, any kind of distorted ideas about love and connection that have developed as a result of these circumstances or other things in your life you can definitely be the one to kind of show the way to this person energetically um, and also, you know, really taking a proactive approach to, um, you know, creating the life you would like for yourself, becoming that love you wish to receive. And when you do that, when you embody that vibration and everything you do and you exude that in all ways, you help to really call in and magnetize to you people and circumstances and experiences and situations which are of that like vibration. Um, you know, you're calling that home. You're calling all these pieces and those kind of complementary experiences home to yourself. Um, so you have a very um, kind of powerful and unique role in this circumstance, but this is also a very independent energy of, you know, focus on kind of the path ahead for yourself. What do you want to experience? What do you want to create? This person needs this period to just kind of um, go through this litany of, of kind of experience experiences and, and this regret in order to be able to really, you know, decipher what they want moving forward, to be able to strategize that change and to do the work necessary to make up for that lost time and to meet up with you further down the road. So I'm going to get some initials. This can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. Got C. T, S, K, G, P, I, X, D, M, E, J, A, and B. So those are your messages, group two. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I now offer pre-recorded video readings, which are sent to you as a private YouTube link. Turnaround time on those is three to five days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.
I got three. We chose the selenite. So I'm going to start with some tarot and oracle cards to see what are they thinking and feeling about you and the connection. So we have the Knight of Wands, which is fire energy, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Page of Pentacles, which is earth energy, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. The Hermit, which is Virgo. Seven of Wands, so more fire energy. Into Me, I See. and seeing beyond. So a lot of introspection here with the hermit into me I see and seeing beyond. Um, I'm hearing that song. I can see clearly now that the rain has gone. So you might want to um, Google that song. The lyrics may hold additional messages for you. Um, there's a sense of denial that this person has been in, um, a sense of being maybe very overwhelmed by the energies that they have experienced with you, a lot of activations, a lot of kundalini energy with that knight of wands um, and just the overwhelm um, elements of even signs and synchronicities that they have had um, in conjunction with this connection and it being very very overwhelming for them a lot of psychic gifts that might have been activated um, just a lot of change a lot that has been awakened within this person and within you through this connection with one another that may have caused them with the seven of wands to try and kind of like push this away cling to an old version of self um, cling to a view of reality a view of the world a view of themselves um, a way in which they had maybe kind of misconstrued this connection um, and what was happening. There's an energy of temptation here that it was very tempting to lean in, to explore, to allow themselves to be fully immersed um, and kind of dissolve into this connection only to coagulate and sort of be reformed to emerge from some kind of a chrysalis um, into a new version of self but that fear may have really held them back fear of the unknown fear of the uh, you know the uncertainty of kind of what would be on the other side of just allowing themselves to you know fully surrender and move towards you and into this connection in the past um, so again that that element of fear um, seeing clearly now that the rain has gone um, that feels like a lot of heaviness, um, again, a lot of fear-based energies that had really clouded their vision, that their, their first instinct was to kind of push this away. There's been some clarity that has been achieved. Um, you two could definitely be mirroring each other a lot, um, kind of this tandem energy of sort of um, a push-pull dynamic, energetically speaking, um, that when one of you is really in these fear-based energies, the other one almost shines brighter. Um, it's at points of time where one or each, both of you could be reaching for kind of the best version of self that the other is kind of um, doing the work and experiencing that opposite end of the polarity. Um, and so a lot of work that you have done on yourself while this person was kind of in that stance of denial and avoidance and pushing things away this is now reverberated to them now they are able to see clearly um, this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to and perhaps you are working on some shadow work right now confronting some fears in your life um, but it almost feels like a period of rest that you might be in right now um, after you know kind of a, a major or massive period again of like downloads coming in 
um, a lot of psychic gifts that may have come online for you, um, a hill or a mountain that you may have had to climb in terms of challenges within yourself um, or within your kind of worldly circumstances or just, you know, in this kind of ascension pro process um, that you've raised your vibration in such a way that you're now almost on, um, not that you've necessarily gone back to sleep, but it's almost feeling like this idea of you're on sleep mode um, at this point in time. It's, you know, you may be feeling very exhausted, very drained at this point in time and are just kind of drawn to kind of go within, to rest, kind of detach. Um, maybe you've been kind of inclined to detach from watching readings, detach from, you know, expectations about this person and, you know, detach from uh, just people in general, just trying to spend a lot of quiet time by yourself, a lot of reflective time, um, which is very understandable after this kind of period of, of ascension and sort of um, birthing a new version of yourself. During this period of rest, now this person is getting this clarity. Um, they are almost on that kind of up, uphill climb, that, that upward climb that you may have been on previously. Um, and it's a sense of with your energy kind of at rest, your attention focused on other things, it's giving this person the room to, to get that clarity for themselves. They're not feeling so backed into a corner. They're actually taking the choice to kind of, or making the choice to kind of explore all of this bit by bit. Um, the sense of overwhelm that they may have really experienced, again, with kind of the psychic gifts, um, a lot of deep empathy that may have really activated within them, some telepathy that could be going on between the two of you, um, strange or vivid dreams that they could be having or just other kind of psychic senses, um, clear audience, clear sentience, all of these different things that are very much outside of um, somebody who may have been with the page of pentacles, a very practical person, a very, you know, down to earth kind of person just relied on their five senses and kind of on what they had been taught, um, what they had come to know, what people around them had been doing, and sort of um, someone who was very oblivious to their spiritual self or to matters of spirituality. Um, with you in kind of this, this period of rest, as far as this connection goes, or just energetically in your life right now, um, it's almost open terrain. It's I'm hearing it's open season for this person to really seek out these answers, um, to kind of hunt down these answers within themselves. Um, um, to, you know, to dig deeper beneath those layers of fear, to at least observe these things. Um, if they're not acting upon them, this can definitely, with Page of Pentacles, tie into kind of information gathering. Somebody who now they may be watching readings, now they may be kind of, you know, reading up on topics of spirituality. Maybe they've gotten books or, you know, they're listening to audio books or even, you know, podcasts or reading blogs where people are talking about this, about psychic gifts, about psychic abilities, about, you know, the ascension journey and spiritual awakenings this person's in this period of kind of information gathering and coming into a place of wisdom within themselves um, recognizing that what they were kind of fighting and pushing was really just a version of themselves um, they're recognizing as well on some level that a lot of what they were fearing about this connection is almost the best version of themselves that has been kind of activated it's a newness and ex it's an expansion of who they were um, there's a lot of passion that they have for you that is really becoming renewed it's replacing the the element of fear that they may have had about this otherness, um, kind of the more they are becoming acclimated to, you know, what's been awakened and kind of um, is growing within themselves, the more that they are kind of um, sort of solidifying their knowledge base and becoming more comfortable with what might have been feared as kind of this otherness, this unknown, something that might have been considered very much taboo um, or depending upon their, you know, particular kind of culture or their religious background. They may have thought there was even something kind of um, evil or wrong about some of these things, um, some of these, you know, psychic gifts or somebody who may have been very, um, you know, opposed to, to tarot and divination and, and matters of spirituality. It feels that all of that is really giving way to this this openness and this this almost abundance mindset this eagerness um, to where you know when they were kind of fearing or shunning these aspects of themselves or even aspects about you if you were maybe the more spiritually inclined compared to this person who is more kind of um, practically or mundane minded um, that they are opening up from that they are discarding that fear their mind is opening in a lot of ways they are seeing beyond that they're seeing beyond um, almost the matrix or seeing beyond um, kind of the the program Programming or the beliefs that they were raised with or that the people around them or that, um, you know, society as a whole maybe has about some of these things. 
Um, there seems to be almost a fear that they had of being mocked or ridiculed for you know part of this 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 expansion that was happening within them. Uh, maybe something that was very unconventional about um, the two of you, the dynamic between the two of you, where they didn't really see how you would fit um, properly into one another's worlds, um, and so it was something where they just kind of pushed it away, and there was a, a resistance to that. But there's this energy of almost blending, the blending of two worlds, um, where once they only saw kind of of difference and polarity. Um, they're now seeing almost um, a, a variation of color. It's a spectrum. You know, it's neither this nor that. It's just, it's kind of a blending of all of these things. Um, you know, again, qualities within this person that they had projected onto you or had been very kind of fearful of, they're now starting to kind of own that within themselves. Um, and it's, it's, bring, it's, it's making them feel more magnetized to you. Um, they're starting to almost maybe distance or separate themselves from a version of who they used to be, interests that they used to have, beliefs that they used to have, and in the process of that, it's drawing them closer to you as maybe someone who could understand what they're going through, um, someone who has been on this similar path. Uh, your interests are now starting to intersect with one another, where they may have kind of thought this was very you know, different, this is very other. Now they are finding resonance in that. They're seeing something of substance and of worth and of value there. They feel very much at the beginning stages of this, still a lot of defensiveness, still a lot of um, kind of this energy of caution. Um, this is somebody who's just observing at this point in time, not ready to speak, not ready to act, um, but they are, they are taking in all the information. Um, they're willing to look, they are opening their mind, they are, they are observing um, rather than just being very quick to judge, quick to judge the connection. Um, they're opening themselves up to guidance, to other possibilities, other explanations of, you know, what kind of the nature of this dynamic is between the two of you, what is possible in the future. What may have seemed is like a very rigid, no, you two couldn't work well together um, in terms of a relationship in the 3D sense. They're now opening their mind to the possibility that things are not what they seem as they seem or, you know, what might have been perceived as boundaries or barriers between the both of you, almost this energy of like a forbidden fruit. Um, those kind of um, proximities are now giving way to an openness, the ability to, you know, kind of grow beyond that. It's these glimmers of hope that they have that um, maybe what seemed like a very cut and dry kind of yes and no um, situation now enters into the arena of maybe possibly this could work possibly there was something they hadn't seen before that they had overlooked they're seeing the situation in you from a different angle um, so it's an openness it's a major change in the sense of someone that was very close-minded is now curious, um, somebody who's investigating, somebody who's looking, somebody who is um, sharpening their skills or enhancing their knowledge about spirituality, um, even about soul connections, about psychic gifts, about spiritual awakening, about activation. Um, so an energy of change from complete resistance to um, you know, at least opening themselves up to look and to take in the information, to feel these sensations, to explore a little deeper beneath um, kind of the surface of what they themselves are experiencing and what's coming through for them. So I'm going to get um, some messages from their higher self for you now, group three, and see what do they want to tell you. say I am terrified of you so that ties into the idea of the otherness of this connection what has really been activated within them what is stirred within them um, you know certain things that have been kind of brought online brought up out of the subconscious within them um, it's very scary stepping outside of the comfort zone, breaking away from tradition in some way or breaking out of, again, kind of a worldview or an, a level of experience that they had had with the nature of connections before. Um, it's something that is very frightening for them, but they are in this energy of observation at this point in time. Rather than closing their eyes and turning away or pushing this away, um, they're allowing themselves to look, finally. 
And they also say, you turn loose heaven within me. So this is that energy of activation. Um, so if you've been wondering, have they been you know, activated in the same way that you have? Have they experienced you know, a lot of the same um, kind of psychic gifts coming up and you know, ascension symptoms and all of these things? Um, that is the confirmation that yes, the two of you have really impacted each other on an energetic level, on a spiritual level that is very mutual. The ways in which you have both approached and have leaned into this process have been very different. Um, again, it's this energy of this person may have, you know, their kind of way of dealing with this might have been to kind of push it away to reject this. Um, and you kind of leaned into it. You explored this. You allowed yourself to kind of move through that or to be moved by spirit and by the universe through this process of kind of um, opening up to a deeper level of who you are, a deeper level of your own nature, allowing parts of yourself to come online that had been dormant um, or unknown to you previously. And a lot of work that you've been doing, a lot of kind of up leveling, these glow ups and, and these ascensions, the shadow work, um, you know, closing out chapters and cycles in your life, um, taking back your power, this, you know, cultivating this abundance mindset. You've done a lot of this heavy lifting. You've done a lot of this very intense work. Um, and you're now at this period of, you know, if you are not already taking the time to rest, this can be that guidance to just, you know, take some time to rest. You've been through so much. Um, you know, there, they'll, there will still be time to continue on kind of your spiritual journey and the work. Um, but it's almost, you know, taking a break from that for, for a period of time if you feel so inclined to do that. Um, and in that period of, of kind of rest, that hiatus for you, um, it's now this person's turn to sort of pick up some of that slack, um, to kind of commence some of that work that they had deferred up to this point in time to explore those aspects of ascension of awakening that although they have kind of pushed that away or ignored that energetically and in other ways they've almost been dragged along through this process as you've done that climb they have climbed on a certain level now it's entering more into the arena of choice um, a choice that is being made on their part to no longer close their eyes or look away but to turn and focus on this to inquire to be inquisitive um, to research to study and to learn. They also say you are my star who outshines all others. Um, so you may resonate as a star seed. This can be a confirmation of that for you, um, of you and this person. Um, definitely very, um, you know, the nature of this connection between the two of you kind of defies logic. Um, it's outside of the parameters of a conventional connection. Um, it's outside of the realm. It's very otherworldly to what this person has ever known. And part of that is that terror, um, that feeling of otherness, um, something where they weren't really ready to look at that part of themselves. It's very outside of what they have been taught to believe or have come to know or, you know, the nature of how other people's experiences have been. Um, but they are, you know, if they are able to see you and observe you in terms of your social media, this ties into that energy of looking and seeing. They could definitely be watching you on social media if you have some kind of a platform, maybe where you've been very public about your journey or just um, kind of what they are able to observe in terms of the evolution and the change energetically, even in how you look in pictures, there's a glow about you now. Your smile seems a lot more genuine. A heaviness that you are carrying with you has almost been um, kind of released or transmuted or dissolved um, from you. And so you are that living proof that, you know, through that very arduous process of, of awakening and kind of leaning into these things and being activated spiritually and choosing that path of ascension, um, participating with the universe in that sense, that on the other side of that very um, kind of confusing and terrifying process um, is this place of expansiveness. Um, and it's really, it's encouraging this person then to, to start to look, to start to do the work, um, to reach for that same level of, of almost accomplishment on a spiritual and energetic level that you have accomplished. And they also say, I want to follow you through all times and through all time and all universes. So that ties in again with that starseed connection, this otherworldly aspect 
of this dynamic between the two of you. Um, this person definitely could be aware or starting to become aware of soul connections, um, the dynamic between the two of you of a past life connection. And again, it's this idea of um, you really being an inspiration for them. Um, the way that you with dignity have kind of gone through this journey and this process. You've allowed yourself to be humbled by the universe. You have taken back your power and you have risen from the ashes like a phoenix. Um, it's very inspirational to this person. It's very inspirational to others. Um, whether you are directly um, kind of the living embodiment and proof of that, you do things of a spiritual nature, or you just kind of share that with other people, or if it's just, you know, you being that living embodiment of kind of that surrender and that energy of growth, and that it is again reflective just in who you are innately, in a very just kind of casual sense, just, you know, very basic things that you are, that you are posting, or, you know, kind of how you carry yourself, the vibration that you hold, the light within yourself that you have um, unchained from a place of bondage within you, um, that all of this is very inspirational to this person. It's inspirational to other people, whether you are, again, directly kind of talking about this as sort of, you know, this is what is possible through a spiritual journey. This is what is possible through co-creating and surrendering, you know, to these processes with the universe. Or if it's something where, you know, this is just a quiet aspect of yourself, you don't really share that directly with anyone. Um, it's very apparent in your energy and in your vibration. People are able to perceive that and pick that up. Um, some people that's a very conscious, other people it's a very unconscious draw. You may have people drawn to you, um, you know, a, a different kind of, it's this idea of sort of lighting up a room when you, when you enter it. Um, you help raise the vibration of others around you. You are that living proof of, um, you know, kind of the, the success or, or the ability, the capacity of people to really, you know, change themselves from the inside out. And this person is very inspired by that. So I'm going to get some guidance for you about the situation. Okay, and we have activate the divine masculine guardian of the green world. So that is definitely a confirmation right there with all that energy of activation and ascension. Um, if you are the divine feminine watching this and um, you resonate maybe as a twin flame, you consider this person, you know, your soulmate, your divine masculine, your divine counterpart. This can be a confirmation that the work you have done um, has very successfully activated them now to um, kind of begin this process, that process of introspection, that process of kind of gathering the information leaning into their journey, stepping into that best version of self, that most empowered version of self. Um, you know, this is confirmation to, you know, continue being very proactive in where you are being nudged and guided in terms of your healing journey. If you are feeling this inclination, this heaviness to just rest, to take a break for a period of time um, from a twin flame journey, you know, from watching readings or, you know, really feeding so much of your energy into this. If just in general, you feel that you need to take quiet time, you need to kind of detach from social media or, you know, electric electronic devices, you're feeling very called into nature, that can be very healing for you as well. Now is the time for you to really rest and recharge your batteries. Um, and it's, it's, it's this person, it's this other person now who is going to be doing a lot of this heavy lifting, um, energetically speaking, that you've really been taking the lead for up to this point in time. Um, they may or may not be very out vocal about that or very, you know, kind of outwardly apparent and direct about that. Um, but it's something that you may start to experience during your period of hiatus, during your period of rest, um, sensing these things shifting within you, sensing sensing a lightness, almost as if kind of a burden is being lifted off. And it's this person, consciously or energetically, kind of taking that, taking that weight, holding that light, holding that energy for a period of time so that you have the ability to kind of rejuvenate, recharge your batteries in a way um, that you have really been inspirational to this person. Um, and this is somebody who's in the process of taking the lead, taking the lead in their own life, taking a lead, um, taking the lead as far as this ascension is concerned, their spiritual awakening, their journey, um, you know, this journey of exploration rather than continuing to kind of deny and avoid. Um, this is now active participation to explore and to investigate. So I'm going to get some initials for you. This can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. 
got F, Y, D, C, L, I, E, N, X, K, Q, S, Z, P, and V. So those are your messages group three. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I now offer pre-recorded video readings, which are sent to you as a private YouTube link. Turnaround time on those is three to five days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking any of those out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.